And welcome to another Cardinal's Nest on HBC Channel 25, the sports show devoted exclusively to St. Mary's University and its athletic programs. Dean Beckman along with Sports Information Director Donnie Netto back for another week of uh, Cardinal's Talk. And Donnie, later on in the program, will focus on the baseball team as we have assistant coach Pat Jacobson and uh, relief pitcher Sam Nord here to talk about the baseball program, how the season's going, and also a special game coming up uh, next week. Yeah, I want to talk to them about this weather situation. They go to Arizona and it's 80 degrees here. They come back and they play. They played on uh, on on Wednesday and it was uh, frigid. So uh, we got to talk to Jake about uh, fixing that weather before the end of the season right. because sitting at those games in 30 degrees is not a lot yeah, of fun. And then he can do a lot of things, including fix the weather. So he's got to do a little bit better job with that. We'll have them on later. Also, we'll talk about that prostate cancer awareness day that the baseball team is having. That'll be coming up a little bit later on here on the Cardinals Nest. First, though, we'll take a look back at uh, the previous week in St. Mary's sports. And Donnie, when you look at the whole season, uh, one of the quieter weeks, uh, but we can talk uh, some softball action. Uh, with, the, oh, with the Easter break and everything, there weren't quite as many teams in action. Uh, but last week, softball did take on Concordia, and they extended a two-game winning streak, extended it to four games with a doubleheader sweep over the Cobbers. Yeah, very important sweep for the, for the Cardinals as they get ready for a, a really, really difficult uh, couple of games here with St. Thomas and Luther in back-to-back -back days. And so it was good for them to get the, those two wins. Uh, they won 10-7 to in the first game and then really turned it on in the second game, winning 8-0 in five innings. And, and uh, you know, offensively, they're playing extremely well. You know, to score 18 runs in a, in a doubleheader is, is, is great for them, and it's good to see for, uh, you know, for the Cardinals, and, and hopefully they can keep that going. Like I said, they've got a, a tough back-to-back uh, -to -back doubleheader with St. Thomas and Luther, both nationally ranked teams. So uh, the going is going to get pretty tough for them here, uh, here this week, but uh, they're coming into it with a lot of momentum. Well, and there you see uh, in that 10 to 7 win in game one, Aaron Stenseth, two for four, her second home run of the season. So she's supplying, and we talked a little bit about this last week, so, uh, some unexpected power for the Cardinals. Yeah, they're finally turning it on, and we kind of joked last week about. Uh, you know, Katie Gannon is helping the team out. She led the team in home runs last year, and she's back to, to as an assistant coach, and it's nice for her to, 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 to lend a helping hand. And, and uh, it's, it's important that they turn up the heat in terms of hitting home runs because they're going to need that uh, as the season progresses. Uh, Alex Rasky has been swinging a real good bat as well. She's got two home runs as well. And so, you know, uh, those two have proven that they've, uh, that they've got the power, and, and uh, hopefully that can continue uh, as the season progresses, you know, I, we've talked a lot about Alex Rasky over the, you know, the course of the beginning of the season, and she just had a phenomenal week last week in their four games, hitting over five, over 500 and and providing a, a lot of pop at the bat with eight RBIs. So uh, she's doing a real nice job in her freshman year. And Kristen Thalen has really, really been impressive this year. Uh, didn't play a lot last year. Uh, more of a reserve role, and she's uh, come on, and she's the starting shortstop now. Tough to replace uh, Katie Gannon, but uh, doing a, a really solid job. And then offensively, she's playing very well. She hit over 500 last week as well in uh, in the Cardinals' two sweeps against Hamlin and Concordia. So uh, it's good to have those uh, those people swinging the bats, people that maybe Coach Miller didn't expect to to really have such a significant offensive role. It's good to see uh, two people like that really step in and kind of take the pressure off of of Paige Carter, Haley Oll, Nicole Olson, those that really have been expected to mm -hmm. kind of carry the load. Well, and Paige hasn't seemed to mind the pressure. She's the third Cardinals regular batting over 400 on the season and leads the team with 20 runs batted in. So even though she doesn't have any home runs, she's getting those timely hits and piling up the RBI. Absolutely. Paige has had two great years before this, so I guess it was not uh, surprising that she'd mm -hmm. come on again this year and play very well. And, and, and really, if you think about it, coming off of an all-conference season last year, that's a lot of pressure in itself yeah. to try and repeat what you did uh, your, your year previor, previous, and, and she's just picked up right where she left off and, and is having a, a, great, a great season at the plate, and really she's doing a nice job as, as the Cardinals' second pitcher. The injuries have really plagued the, the Cardinals in terms of pitching, and, and Kayla Peterson has, has had to carry the load as, as the starter, and, and uh, Paige has you know, pitched in high school, hadn't really pitched much uh, uh, as a Cardinal, and, and because of injuries to, uh, to a couple of pitchers that the Cardinals did have come in, 
she's been uh, she's been asked to do some pitching for the Cardinals as well, and and is doing a very nice job. Yeah, and, and speaking of Kayla, uh, I had a chance to talk with her a little bit today, and I said, "How's the arm?" Because as you said, she has had to be the workhorse this year, and she said, "Actually, it feels great. Uh, I think just uh, eating up as many innings as she is, uh, uh, she's keeping that arm in shape. Uh, she's staying healthy, and that was a key this year for the Cardinals. And really, you look a 4.35 ERA. She is keeping the Cardinals in all of these games and then relying on uh, on the offense which has been coming through absolutely and that's and that's the way they're, they're gonna win games by scoring runs mm -hmm. there's no question about that and and uh, you've got to tip your hat to Kayla she's doing a great job and and that's a lot of that's a that's a tough road to hoe when you've got to be expected to pitch virtually every game of, of, of a season you know that's gonna weigh on the arm we can joke with with Sam when he comes in here he probably wishes that he'd be able to do that <laughs> pitch every game like that but uh, you know softball is a different motion and they are allowed to uh, or able their body is physically able to uh, to pitch uh, every day and and uh, you know as I kept referring to earlier they've got St. Thomas and Luther in back-to-back -back days and so she's gonna be throwing a lot of innings in the next couple of days. Yeah. The other thing really coming through for Kayla beside the offense is the uh, uh, the play of her defense. Uh, 20 errors on the season so far but the opponents have 41 so they they are really playing some pretty stellar defense. Yeah when you're fielding at a 961 clip that's uh, that's pretty good defense and and uh, you know you, you mentioned you know they've got 20 errors well they've played you know 18 games that's just you know that's just About over one error a game, a game yeah. which is that's not too shabby and and uh, you know I, I know coach Miller uh, preaches solid defense and they are playing very good defense they've got a lot of people playing positions that they hadn't played before you know we, we mentioned Chris and Thalen playing uh, shortstop now, and uh, Michelle Karn moved from right field. Now she's their their regular third baseman. Nicole Olson has played some shortstop and some second base, and and Haley Oll really is the only regular who's uh, who's in a position she was in last year, and that's at first base. So you know a lot of people are playing different positions, and and uh, so it takes a little time to adjust to uh, to that. And I think that uh, you know, like I said, fielding at a 961 clip is is pretty solid defense. And uh, so hopefully the Cardinals' uh, success will continue a four-game winning streak. As we tape this, they're heading up to uh, St. Thomas, always uh, the favorite in the MIAC conference. So as we talked about, that's going to be a tough one. And then they follow that up again with Luther this week. Yeah, you've got St. Thomas. Uh, you know, we always hold a special spot in our hearts for playing St. <laughs> Thomas. And, and, you know, actually, I think that for softball, there's even there's even some more uh, you know, rivalry or whatnot because uh, Coach Cheetah is, is up at St. Thomas. You know, John coached here for a number of years, and, and uh, it's always nice to, to get an opportunity to try and knock uh, Coach Cheetah off. And, and uh, so far in, in eight conference games, nobody's been able to knock, uh, knock the Tommies off. They come into the doubleheader ranked 25th in the nation, and then, like I said, it doesn't get any easier because Luther comes to St. Mary's on on uh, Thursday, and they're ranked fifth in the nation, so it's going to be a, a tough back-to-back -back there. And then they've got two games again, or two doubleheaders this weekend on the road. They go to Carleton on Saturday, and then they've got St. Benedict on Sunday. So it's a very busy week, and uh, I think Kayla's going to be icing a lot after Sunday <laughs> at uh, St. Benedict. And not to look too far ahead, but if we can go back to those conference standings, uh, the St. Thomas game, of course, on Wednesday is big, but I think even bigger are those games against Carleton, St. Ben, St. Olaf, McAllister, because in those conference standings, you know, it's only the top four that make the playoffs. And right now, St. Mary's has a little separation there uh, between the St. Mary's, which is number four, and that fifth team. But there's not a lot, and uh, and it's going to be a battle for that fourth spot. No question. And, and and really, you hit it you hit it on the head. The key for the Cardinals right now is not to worry about St. Thomas and Gustavus. It's more to worry about St. Ben's and Carlton and McAllister, the teams that are below them. You keep them below them, below you. You're sitting in fourth. You're not going to get any worse if you keep them below right. you. So yeah, you're absolutely right. And and you know, Coach Miller's focused on on St. Thomas uh, on Wednesday and then Luther on Thursday. As uh, Coach Jacobson, I'm sure will will attest to. You can't afford to look ahead because the minute you start looking ahead or looking past somebody. Uh, that's when somebody comes up and, and, and knocks you off, and, and the Cardinals can't afford that. They've got to continue to play good, solid uh, softball, and, and uh, you know face each opponent as it comes, and and uh, and play to the uh, to the capabilities that they have. And uh, hopefully, good things will be working out. And in early May, we'll be talking about conference yeah. tournament. And uh, we'll talk baseball in a little while with Sam Nord and Pat Jacobson. But now we switch over to uh, women's tennis action, Donnie. And they haven't played in a while. They have uh, a few games, a few matches coming up this weekend on Saturday in De Pere, Wisconsin, uh, when they take on Michigan Technical University and St. Norbert College. Uh, so they haven't played, actually, since uh, April Fool's Day. Yeah, it's kind of interesting.
interesting that this time of year when you've got a spring sport where you actually have almost a two-week lapse between between matches and and uh, you know I'm not sure Coach Hallberg is thrilled with that long break, but when you've got Easter in there, there's really not a lot you can do. But uh, they, they've been playing some very good tennis. You know, they come into, into the weekend with an 8-8 eight eight overall record. They step out of conference play now this, this weekend with those three matches against uh, Michigan Tech and, and St. Norbert, and then on Sunday they go to UW-Stevens Point. So uh, a big weekend of non-conference. If, no, if for no other reason, then it gets them back into playing again and kind of gets, gets them back into the you know, into the swing of things as they close out their season with, uh, with a push to hopefully make it to the conference tournament. Well, and that 8-8 eight and eight rec record really indicative of how the season has gone for them. They don't have uh, a consecutive match winning streak longer than three games, nor do they have a losing streak longer than two matches. So, um, I mean, they, they kind of win one, lose one. It's been one of those years. Absolutely, and I think it talks a lot about the... Uh, you know, about the conference in general and in how balanced it is and, and really in, in the opponents that they're playing. Everybody is, uh, you know, it, it, they're kind of on all on that same plane. So, uh, like you said, you win one, you lose one. It's kind of uh, depends on who is on for that day. And tennis is one of those sports. You know, it's a, it's a team sport, but it's really an individual sport. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot depends on who's on that day. And, and uh, you know, you, if, if ever there's a sport where you need your individuals to be at the top of their game every single time they compete. It's really, tennis is one of those that you really need that. Yeah, and we hope on next week, Cardinals Nest, to uh, have on head coach Jeff Hallberg and uh, Bailey Edwards, uh, one of his uh, senior players, one of the three Edwards sisters uh, dominating this year for the women's team. And Bailey's having a phenomenal season, 9-7, and seven, an individual record, and of course teaming up with her sister McKenna for an outstanding doubles mark. I think it'll be really fun to have Bailey on and just kind of talk about the whole dynamics of having two sisters here playing with you, um, you know, and, and the fact that you're playing with your youngest sister uh, in doubles. It's got to be a lot of fun. It's got to be, you know, really neat to be able to, uh, to, to, to share something like that. Both Bailey and McKenna are, are leading the, the team in singles wins, and, and so things are, things are kind of shaping up really nicely. They're going to make a nice push, and, and I'm being curious to ask Coach Hallberg what it's like to be able to pencil in Edwards, Edwards, <laughs> Edwards in those top three spots in singles, and it's got to be kind of a luxury that uh, you know, not, not too many coaches have, but right. they've got three sisters, different ages, all on the same yeah, team. Yeah, I mean, you're right. It, when it's not a twin situation, it's unique to have two but it's extra special to have three. It doesn't happen right. very often. So hopefully next week we'll get to talk uh, to Bailey about that and her head coach, Jeff Hallberg. Jeff, of course, also the coach for the men's tennis team, Donnie, and uh, they also uh, have been off since April 1st when they took on uh, the University of St. Thomas last, losing that one 8-1. Uh, to one. And uh, they've got Carleton next on the 13th, followed by Northwestern College. Yeah, big uh, a big week for them. They, Carleton's a tough tough opponent they have on Friday night, and and uh, you know they're a very talented uh, group. And I'm sure Coach Halberg is is ready. Uh, the players, as we talked about, having that long of a layoff, they've got to be chomping at the bit a little bit just to get back into 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 action. And and uh, you know we talked a little bit about that St. Thomas match last week. Uh, Bobby Steingraber and Mike Lunka continue to to roll along. They're 16 and one this season, which is really just a phenomenal uh, record. And with all 16 wins coming at number one doubles, so hopefully they can continue to roll and and maybe uh, get the Cardinals some momentum as they head into the the final push of their season as well. Right, and then Sam Puff uh, individually 12 and five on the season. Most of those coming at number three, but he's really dominating that number three spot. Yeah, Sam's been playing very well. I think he was kind of a surprise last year. I know we talked about him a lot last year as a freshman, and and uh, I think that uh, you know he really kind of took the took the the tennis world by storm last year, and then this year really just picked up where he left off and is really doing a. A, a very nice job, and I know uh, Coach Halberg has some experience with Sam because Sam also plays soccer. So uh, you know, uh, it's nice to see those dual athletes. Uh, you know, with Sam playing soccer and tennis, is uh, it, it's really good to see. And then to see them excel at both sports is is, is pretty neat. Yeah, absolutely. So I look at uh, track and field action now. A couple of meets uh, since last week here on the Cardinals Nest. And uh, the one on April 4th, uh, a bigger meet, the Loris College Invitational. Uh, and then the one uh, after that, uh, sort of over Easter weekend, uh, was much smaller. That was uh, at the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh. Yeah, Coach, uh, Co Coach McMahon, I talked to him after that Loris uh, Invitational. He was very happy with the, with the way his runners performed. You know, Peter Borash did an outstanding job winning the, uh, the, the 1500 there. And Jake Traxler had a solid a solid performance and then the Oshkosh meet really they had three 
uh, throwers that went over there, and that was that was the extent of the the St. Mary's contingent at that uh, at that event. And Coco Booker continues to to, to really shine. Uh, you know, as we've talked, she's come off in, coming off a, a second place finish in the indoor championships in the shot put, and and really is kind of picking up right where she left off with uh, uh, with the outdoor season, and, and is doing a very nice job, kind of setting herself up. For a, for a really good push at the conference championships. I wouldn't be surprised if she's again up in that, in that mm -hmm. top area, um, probably you know, shooting for, a, for an all-conference spot uh, in the outdoor championships as well. Yeah, Donnie, as someone who follows it uh, fairly closely, is Coco at all a surprise this year? Um, I, don't, I don't think so. I think that uh, you know, her and, and Cassandra Burtis have, have really, I think Coach McMahon expected a lot from them this mm -hmm. year because they did work very hard in the, in the off season and they've, and they've, com and they've worked uh, they did a nice job in the indoor seasons. I think that uh, Coach McMahon expects that, and now they realize the expectations that, that are on them, and I think that that's just propelling them to, uh, to, to do even, even right. better. Yeah, and, of course, we had uh, Coach McMahon on last week here on the Cardinals Nest, obviously very pleased with how the outdoor season has started for St. Mary's. All right, stay tuned here to the Cardinals Nest. Coming up next, we'll bring on uh, uh, Pat Jacobson and Sam Nord to talk St. Mary's baseball. That's next here on HBC Channel 25. Hey, that piece on left-handed athletes, is that almost done? Okay, thanks. And we're back here on the Cardinals Nest. Dean Beckman, Donnie Netto, joined now by Pat Jacobson, the assistant baseball coach for the Cardinals, and Sam Nord, a relief pitcher for the Cardinals. And uh, they're both here on the show to talk a little bit about uh, the strikeout prostate cancer, a kind of a prostate cancer awareness day that will be coming up uh, soon for the Cardinals. Uh, they'll uh, have some awareness activities with their home game uh, next week. But also we want to talk about the baseball season so far. and and how it's gone. So, uh, Sam, now this is your first time here on the Cardinals Nest, so that means you get the indoctrination <laughs> a little bit. Uh, you have to tell us sort of where you're from, how you got started with baseball, and, and how you landed at St. Mary's. Sure. Um, I've been playing baseball as long as I can remember, five, six years old. Uh, my dad actually never played competitive baseball, but pretty much taught me everything I know. Um, yeah, it's just been a great ride. I, uh, I went to Henry Sibley, played two years varsity there, and uh, Saw Winnie Key in the summer, and he asked me how I felt about coming down and playing. And next thing I know, it's junior year, and it's been three years of baseball. <laughs> yeah, so you're, you're a junior public relations major at yep. St. Mary's. Yep. And uh, tell, us, tell us about your, your uh, three years so far at St. Mary's. Uh, Feels like it's been a blink of an eye, really. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's junior year, almost done now. we got a month left of junior year. But, uh, yeah, it's just been awesome. I came in undecided and uh, looked at I had oral communications for uh, a class, and I thought, well, it's got to be like PR somehow. Mm -hmm. So I chose that, and it's been great. My major's been fun, um, just finishing up, and mm -hmm. it's been great so far. All right, good. Uh, Pat, uh, the season, talk about that. So far, you're 11 and 14. Uh, really had a good tr spring trip. Uh, conference play has been a little bit rough, but mm -hmm. as an assistant coach for the Cardinals, how would you assess the season so far? We did have a very good trip down to Arizona. Uh, it was really important for us as a, as a group to have a good start down in Arizona. With the MIAC being as tough of a conference as it is consistently year after year, 
uh, we felt it was incredibly important to go down there and to understand what we're all about as a team. Um, offensively, coming back from Arizona, we could not have been happier with the way we performed um, offensively. Mm -hmm. uh, pitching in the same aspect. Our pitching has really taken a step forward this year as opposed to years pr uh, previously. Uh, and like I said, the conference is, is so tough that the bottom teams and the top teams do battle mm -hmm. day after day, year after year. Uh, and we haven't had the start that we planned on from the, from the conference standpoint, but there's still a ton of baseball left. There's 14 games left on our schedule from a conference standpoint, and all it's going to take is, is one good break to go our way, and we'll be turning the corner. But well, we, and I was going to say, you talk about uh, you know, that level of competition in the conference. You played St. Thomas uh, to a 3 nothing game and a 4-3 game, both losses, but you can see how close they were. And as we look at the conference standings, they're, they're at the top. <laughs> yeah. you know, so I mean, it shows you how close the conference is competitively. Yeah, and you had, and you had said in the last segment, Don, that, that St. Thomas is a game that's very easy to get up for. Um, every team in the conference wants to beat St. Thomas. Every team in the conference wants to beat St. Olaf. Um, so that's a game that, that we're definitely prepared for. Um, unfortunately, um, we kind of had a little bit of a jet lag experience yesterday coming back with Concordia. But uh, those are the games that it's, it's important for us to make sure that we are we're mentally and physically ready for every single game because it is so tough. Um, the Carltons, the McAllisters, uh, the St. Thomas, the Hamlins, every single team in this conference can beat anyone on every, any given day. Uh, and that's one of the messages that we're trying to get through to our guys right now is that just because our record is 0-6 in conference right now does not mean that we can't rattle off 10 in a row and be right in the thick of the playoff hunt. Uh, so it's a matter right now of just understanding what we do well and getting back to solid pitching, attacking the strike zone, and putting good at-bats together, and we'll be right back on track. Sam, I know we probably don't want to talk a whole lot about the Concordia game, especially game one, but my question is going to be is, is it, it says a lot about the team and how you can bounce back from a 22-2 a loss and, and play a 4-3 game that really is decided in the seventh inning. As a player, how do you guys do that? How do you put that game behind you and focus on that second game? And, and really, I mean, it was night and day. Yeah, it's one thing that Coach Winnicke has preached to all year is you have a doubleheader, anything that happens, good or bad, first game, you got to battle back and come back and play a second game just as hard as you played the first one because that's what it comes down to because the series can be won in a heartbeat. And same with the playoff race. So if, whether it's a split, a sweep, or you get swept, you have to just go to the next game and just play like it's your first game. Kind of the nice thing about about the spring season is as you play yeah. so many games in a row, you really don't have a lot of time to think about exactly. what happened in the past. Yeah, exactly. Pat, you were mentioning uh, the improvement in the pitching, mm -hmm. and, and really, as a numbers person, you just look at the numbers. You've got five, pe five pitchers that have pitched over 20 innings. You've got nine that have pitched 10 or more. Mm -hmm. You're getting a lot of quality pitching from a lot of different people. That's something you really haven't had in the past. No, you're right. We, we have a, a kind of a smaller staff this year with only 10 pitchers as opposed to the 15, 16 we've had in the past. So from the, season, from the start of the season, we've preached that everyone is going to be important, that it's not going to be a matter of one starter and one reliever that we're going to go to. It's going to be all 10 pitchers who are going to have a crucial role in how successful we are as a season. And these guys took it to heart. You know, players like Sam, Justin Corona Bush, Teddy Van Rance have really taken the staff on their shoulders and, and really guided them and said, this is how you can be successful in college baseball. Um, and like I mentioned before, we're, we're heads and tails above where we were last year. We're, we're not anywhere near where we need to be for this team to be consistently successful, but we've making some very, very big strides. And like you said, we have players that have pitched a lot of innings, um, players like Sam, Justin, uh, Tyler Krejciak, freshman, that have been kind of thrown into the mix and, and have been very, very successful and, and have helped to bring along not only our younger pitchers but our, but our whole team. And that's one thing that we've stressed from day one is that a team, no matter where you are, no matter where you're, what level you are, your team is only successful as your pitching staff. And they've taken that to heart, and they've done a very good job of, of understanding that for our team to be successful, our pitching staff needs to be successful. Sam, a couple of questions for you. Uh, you come out of the bullpen. You're primarily, primarily a relief pitcher. One start this year down in Arizona. What's your mindset having to come out of the bullpen? You don't know what situation you're going to walk into, what the score might be. How do you prepare for, for games? Yeah, it's, it's a lot like a starting pitcher in a sense that, you know, you have a workload, whether it's big or small. Um, basically, any pitcher, your goal is to give your team a chance to win. And whether we have a lead, whether we are tied, or whether we're losing, if I go in the game, just give my team the best chance to win. If we have a lead, 
put up a zero right after a couple runs are scored for a team is basically what I try to do. Throw strikes. If there's a runner on base, almost just worry about the batters that are on there at, at plate and just do the best I can to get mm -hmm. those guys out. It's and, interesting. I didn't mean to cut you off. I asked Pat this uh, last week, and I'm going to ask you now. What is the biggest difference between being a starting pitcher and being a reliever? Um, I'd say you got to get ready faster. Um, you also have to kind of adapt to how the game is going. Because as a starter, you start the game, obviously. So it's a 0-0 game. Everything's the same. But, you know, you have to kind of, if you're warming up in the pen, and then it's, you know, you have to wait another 20 minutes before you go in or whatever. You have to basically not overblow your load and not mm -hmm. be shot before you even go into the game. Or if you only have a few pitches to get warm, make sure you have those down and go into the game. Yeah. So just being ready for different situations. Sam, everyone always seems to make a big deal out of left-handed pitchers, <laughs> which is exactly what you are. You're a lefty. So what advantage does it have, in your opinion? Does it make a difference? Uh, do you see any benefit being left-handed? Well, we're automatically the best athletes on the field. So that's, that's always a good start. And the smartest, right? And the smartest. And the best looking. No, I just... <laughs> I don't know. It's just a different look usually because when you're growing up, mostly everyone's right-handed. So, you know, it's another look. Uh, it's easier to hold runners on base. That's one thing I've made a thing of my career is just being able to hold the guys on first to let them get the second. But it's just, it's pretty mm -hmm. much it. Um, you're pretty much only held to first base or outfield if you're not a pitcher. So if you don't know how to pitch as a lefty, it's usually more important that you do growing up. So that's basically the, what I narrow mm -hmm. it down to. Yeah. Uh, and also, uh, Sam, you're helping out uh, Coach Jacobson with uh, the strikeout prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. It's an awareness day. Tell us a little bit more about that. Oh, uh, yeah. For my case studies class, we have to do a campaign for an organization. And we kind of narrowed it down to uh, prostate cancer awareness and uh, Basically, just trying to get the student body, especially the males, more knowledgeable about prostate cancer and how it affects um, the men in general in America, and mm -hmm. basically just going with that. Jake, this is the second year of it of this of this program. Last year was a huge success. I know uh, uh, the the blue the light blue armbands are still floating around and and had a very nice raffle last year. Talk about this year and uh, and what people can expect. Uh, actually, all week because it starts on on uh, Monday and then kind of runs all through the week uh, at different at different venues around the MIC? Correct. There's uh, there's two game dates in the conference, uh, the 18th and the 21st, uh, and we expanded it to a week this year uh, in hopes of, of being able to gain more money and, and receive more donations, which 100% uh, is donated to the Prostate Cancer Foundation. So um, it's a 100% contribution, and we're hoping to raise as much money as we can because um, Sam hit the nail on the head with how serious this disease is. Uh, statistics show one out of six males in America will be diagnosed with prostate cancer. Uh, and the, and the, the popular belief is that it's nothing that will affect a 20 or a 30 year old that's down the line. When the truth is, uh, in your 20s and your 30s is when you need to be tested. And that's, the, that's what we're trying to get across to the college demographic, is how serious this disease is for younger males and the, the quicker we can get the word out the easier it's going to be to get tested and, and for early recognition and of course that date as you said uh, april 21st it goes on all week and then sort of culminates with that game against st john's uh, starting at 1 p.m the double header and sam i know you're excited about uh, the baby blue uniforms you get to wear uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. that day as well yeah, right so, <laughs> yeah. so sam in your estimation we just have a little time left here what's been the most difficult thing in educating uh, the, the 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 college males about prostate cancer well, it's, it's the last thing really on their mind or diseases or anything like that. So it's just important for them to understand that later down the road that it's, it's, it's going to be time to start mm -hmm. looking ahead at that because like, he's, like Coach Jake said, it's one out of six males will be diagnosed and over two million men are actually living with the disease now and, uh, and it's 35%, you're 35% more likely to develop prostate cancer than women are breast cancer. So mm -hmm. it's very common. So yeah. it's just getting these kids, you know, take a little time out of their day, understand that this disease is common. Mm -hmm. Do something about it. All right. Pat Jacobson, Sam Nord, thanks for joining us on the show today. Thank thanks you. for having us. All right. Uh, thanks for watching The Cardinal's Nest here on HBC Channel 25.